What is up, YouTube? A little bit later on this Friday afternoon than I normally want to do it, but that is how she goes. Uh, I, I said Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. I'm doing it in the afternoon here in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. The sun is shining, and that is what I want to talk to you guys about today on this uh, video that I'm doing for you guys is the British Columbia fight scene or the Vancouver Lower Mainland Mixed Martial Arts scene. Uh, we've got things pumping and banging and bruising and all the other jazz that you want to say up here in uh, the Lower Mainland and obviously Battlefield Fight League and the Canada Cup coming up in April I want to touch on. And also even the Ultimate Fighter, believe it or not, I want to talk about a little bit as well. But before we get into that, I will say make sure you click that like button, make sure you click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you guys can find out when I have more of these videos dropping. But as I said previously, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I will be putting videos out. And if there's any other funky stuff going on, like breaking news or anything that I want to touch on in terms of, um, you know, maybe some reaction videos, then those could come out other days. But Monday, Wednesday, Fridays are my schedule. And obviously we have Mondays, uh, the MMA Sucker podcast with Fraser Crone. So... Getting into things here, let's kick things off with Battlefield Fight League 80. Uh, World War is what they're entitling it, and we got Radley De Silva against Caleb Moctezuma. These two guys both fought in the last Battlefield Fight League card, Battlefield Fight League 79. Uh, Radley is 4-1. and one. At Battlefield Fight League 79, Radley De Silva uh, earned the championship, defeating Maxim Susi, who had that title wrapped around his waist, and Radley was able to get the job done. Now, he earned a title in his third pro fight under the Rives FC banner, went on to have a few canceled fights, and then he competed against Mike McAloon and showcased his full fighting potential uh, domination on the ground, not getting the finish, but again, dominating uh, Mike. And then moving forward, uh, Maxime Susi uh, thought that Radley may tire out uh, in a five-round fight, uh, or he may keep this fight standing. But believe it or not, Radley got the job done. He earned himself a unanimous decision and that featherweight title around his waist. Uh, fans may not have found it to be the most exciting fight on the fight card. Uh, there were, it wasn't a knockout like his upcoming opponent. But he did get the job done, and he proved that he is a well-rounded fighter with an impressive gas tank. Now moving to the other side, uh, the Mexican-based fighter, Caleb Moctezuma, 11-4. He's on a significant winning streak, I believe, here. Two, four, six-fight winning streak, and he made his Battlefield Fight League debut again at BFL 79, that, which was the last event that they just had. He defeated Gagging Gill. Uh, which was quite surprising, I might add, because Gagan, if you guys know him, uh, the local scene definitely knows him, is one of the best strikers and punchers and boxers to come out of the Lower Mainland. His boxing is is precision-based, it's, it's technical, and uh, I was actually speaking to someone in the back uh, that was in the back with him, and even walking out to the cage, I, I spoke to him a few days ago, actually, and I heard that his coaches were telling him not to get into a firefight with this guy. You know, Gagan's a precision guy and not to get into a war and uh, sort of just let fireworks go and, and get into a rock'em, sock'em robot kind of thing. And unfortunately, that's what happened. He got into a firefight and Caleb uh, landed some serious punches to knock out Gagan just two minutes and six seconds into that very first round. So a very interesting fight in the main event. If I were to make my prediction, I would go Radley De Silva. Just based on uh, the skill set that he has, I, I don't know a ton about Caleb, but uh, I do know that it could be any puncher's chance in this one because, you know, like we saw in that last one, he's got heavy hands and punchers can land those punches and, and lights can go out. But Radley has a very well-rounded game and uh, that's how we could see him get the job done. A few more fights that were announced for the Battlefield Fight League 80 card. Taylor Christopher will make his return against Palomares, who will be making his Battlefield Fight League debut. Uh, he may, Actually, he made his Battlefield Fight League debut against the number one ranked uh, Zanaga, and it, this was an interesting fight. Uh, he has heavy hands. He landed some strikes. We thought the fight could have been over. And obviously, the number one ranked fighter uh, turned the tables and got the job done in that one. Uh, 
Taylor Christopher, as it says in in this uh, in this statement here, and and the comment or the Taylor Christopher, as it says here, his lone loss in the past ten years was last year in a BFL World Featherweight Title fight, uh, in a fight that he actually looked like he was landing the crisper strikes, but Maxime just uh, outpaced him a little bit, and uh, we'll see Taylor Christopher make his return in this one, and we'll see how. The return goes against the Mexican fighter who has heavy, heavy hands. Another fight announced for this fight card, and this one is bad blood. Definitely. More than World War here, this one is bad blood. These two guys, a lot of trash talk. Uh, If you scroll through the slides on the Battlefield Fight League Instagram page, you will see there is a warning, and it's foul language used in both videos by both fighters. The trash talk leading up to this one is going to be good. We've got Rafael Ouellette against Austin Batra. Uh, a lot of people know Austin Batra was the, the BFL bad boy back in the day. I uh, haven't seen him inside the cage in quite some time, so this will be an interesting fight. Rafael has uh, a great jiu-jitsu background. He's a black belt. Uh, Austin trains with the Titan Training Center and those guys. So we'll see how this one plays out. Tenth Planet against... Uh, just some funky grappling out of uh, Raph Willette, who is the younger brother of Nick Willette. And uh, we'll see how this one plays out. I'm not going to make a prediction in this one just yet. I'd like to see the the videos leading up to this one and the bad blood, even maybe way in day. I probably won't make a prediction until much, much closer to the event. Those are the two that were announced. We've also got coming up uh, later this month, March 22nd, local kid who now trains out of Las Vegas, Nevada at Extreme Couture, Jeremy JBC Kennedy, finally gets his featherweight championship title fight against Patricio Pitbull. This is a fight he's been calling for since his last victory. In fact, it's a fight he's been calling for for quite some time. JBC is the former two-time BFL world champion, three-time BFL amateur champion. I remember watching this guy. Growing up as he was a teenager uh, with West Coast Martial Arts, coming up through the Battlefield Fight League ranks, he's fought for the UFC, he's fought for PFL, he's with Bellator, uh, who's now purchased by PFL, and this guy has a legitimate chance to have that belt around his waist after this fight on March 22nd in Belfast. So looking forward to that one. And then uh, moving forward, we got the Canada Cup, which uh, an interesting one here that I did not see coming at all. Now, I knew Josh Kwiatkowski, uh, the juggernaut, local fan favorite uh, in the Battlefield Fight League and local promotions. This guy does not do anything less than uh, firefight inside that cage. He brings fireworks to the table. Uh, he's He's quieted down his game a little bit in terms of just getting in there and and having a slugfest but he's turned it up his precision striking is there he's got grappling uh, I know he's been training with Matt Kwan at on guard a little bit for some of his grappling and he coaches a lot as well and he's got a giant fight against Jesse Arnett who's a 20 and 10 veteran of the cage uh, Jesse's fought the who's who of Canadian MMA he's a UAE Warriors vet Uh, So Josh has a huge, huge, huge fight on his hands uh, on April 20th, 420 at the Sun God Arena in uh, South Delta, or North Delta, I mean. This is an interesting one. Uh, We're going to see Josh Johnson on this card as well. Knockout Events presents Canada Cup. What a fun fight card this is going to be. And it's at an arena, which is a cool uh, venue. We'll see how they lay out the seating and the cage or the ring or whatever they're going to do. It looks like it's a ring in the background of this photo. Uh, But I'm very excited for this one on April 20th. Now, the last thing I wanted to touch on here is the ultimate fighter. I spoke about that and I said I was going to talk about it. Jamie, the Grenlin Siraj, who, uh, you know, you've seen him on this channel a ton. We've done interviews with him. We talked to him following his health scare. He made his return, Battlefield Fight League. Uh, It looked like he was going to get a crack at the Ultimate Fighter House coming up here. Uh, The auditions for it and and stuff were in Las Vegas about a week ago. And uh, Jamie Siraj made his way down there to to test his skills and to showcase what he had. And it looked like he was going to be on the cast, but then something came up. I'm not exactly sure. I'd like to get him on, on a, on an interview here to talk about, you know, what went down in Vegas, but the caption says, I came here on a mission to win this whole show. I was in the best shape 
focus mindset, and mean intentions in my career. Nobody was going to get in my way. There was a last minute change that was completely out of my control and man, it stings badly. Now that's sort of what I want to talk to him about is that 